I came to know about Jackson Antworks through Brad's brother-in-law, um, a guy called Justin Luce. He got in contact with me. I met him in Mexico actually a few years ago and he contacted me through Facebook and said, hey, you really got to check out these guys' amps. Uh, I, back then I was playing through a Matchless and a Vox and I'd never heard of Jackson Antworks. And he said, check them out, fantastic. And so I did, looked on the website and I thought, well, this, this could be pretty cool. So, um, so last year on tour, on the road, Brad came along and brought along a couple of his amps and said, hey, try it out. So I did, fell in love with it. For the last year I've been using the Britain 2.0 and it's been fantastic. I found that the tone, everything, it just gave me what I wanted. It, it had the, the, the chimey mids, it had the crystal clear top end, the tight, the tight bottom end, tight punchy bottom end that I, I had to get from several different amps and this amp was able to do it all and I found it real versatile for my style of playing. The fact that you can switch it down power mode to like a, an 18 watts as opposed to the 50 uh, is works great in different settings. Here in the studio I can, I, can I can run it flat out and get a great tone or in a smaller setting I can switch the power down and um, get that, that slightly breaking up tone at a lower level which works great in, in church settings and a lot of the settings that I play in. Uh, I find that the, uh, that the bass and the, and the treble controls and the way the channel one and two work and interact with each other, absolutely fantastic to be able to get that sweet spot, so it's great. Everywhere I've played at, whether it be live or in the studio, um, tracking at home, I've just had great reports from it. Our front of house guys absolutely love it. They pretty much push up the faders, keep everything flat, they put a mic in front of it and they love it. It's, it just works in the studio as well. I'm able to recreate the sound that I want with, like I said, with the, the sweet top end, the tight punchy bottom end. With really minimal treatment, I get the tone I want straight out of straight out having it running the amp flat. So I've never had an issue work with this amp. The reliability has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's quiet, it's, it's clean, it's, it's real straightforward to use. It has absolutely been fantastic. Never missed a beat. The Scarlet 30 is based on an AC30 top boost. It has an added mid-range control here. It's got the, an overall tone control and attenuator behind, which pretty much knocks back the volume in 3 dB increments. And it also has a tube rectifier inside. So what I love about the mid-range controls, I find that uh, a lot of players either have too much mid-range in the sound, which gets that real honky, honkiness, uh, or either too little, which get that real smiley face scoop sound. Um, which aren't bad in itself, but to be able to control that um, is a feature that I really missed on the old Vox AC30s. So to put this in this amp was fantastic. To have the overall tone control, uh, to be able to shape my sound with the bass, mid-range and treble, um, get the gain responding how I want with my guitars, and then shape the overall uh, tone with this, with this control, absolutely genius, love it. And um, the attenuator at the back, pretty much takes the amp from full-blown Class A 30 watts right down to one watt. And um, I love the fact that I could take this into a small rehearsal room, get that sweet, uh, sweet tone and slightly breaking up overdrive without ripping everyone's heads off, or I can take this into a stadium and just be able to fill it.